Nerdy is defined as someone characterized by an obsessive interest in something. Xbox, Marvel, technology, D&D, Lord of the Rings, Escape Room, Pokemon, Funko Pop, Star Wars, PlayStation, Comic Books, Magic the Gathering, Nintendo, Harry Potter, Game of Thrones, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Power Rangers. All of that is Tech D. Rob, host of the Nerd News Podcast, your source for everything nerdy. I realize you guys are all nerds. And this is the Nerd News Podcast. Welcome to the Nerd News Podcast. Um, I'm trying this a little differently again today. Adjusted the angle uh, slightly, as you can see, and I'm using my um, cell phone as the video camera, and it looks pretty crisp from what I'm seeing on the the uh, computer screen here. But we'll see once it gets all mixed down and everything if it if it's any better. Um, but you know, uh, it's it's a step by step prog- progress. I'll do it one week and see how it works, and if it doesn't work, I'll throw that part away. That's how it's gonna go. So once again, we're in the my nerd office here. You can see my Funko Pops probably a little clearer this time. I would think um, we they range all the way from Christmas Superman to Scorpion from Mortal Kombat. And if you have any questions about any of them, just, you know, let me know and I'll tell you what they are. Some of them are pretty easy to tell. Like, that's definitely a Charizard right there. But uh, I feel like these are going to be a little more obscure unless you're really nerdy. They're from the Full Metal Alchemist television show. And of course, Ron Swanson from Parks and Rec and Kenny Powers from one of the greatest television shows of all time, Eastbound and Down. Um, but that's not what you come to the Nerd News for. You don't come to the Nerd News podcast to, to see my Funko Pops. Or maybe you do. I'm not I'm, who judge, I'm not judging. Um, but I will say that if the camera does shake, it's because I'm not using the steadiest of um, camera mount type situations. I'm using uh, a Logitech camera that I have unfolded to prop up my phone. So if it bounces around... Um, too much uh we can blame that and then i'll get it fixed for next week so we're, we're just making do with what we have right now so on the on the the nerd news front we have some quick hits so let's get started so the darkest dungeon 2 is available as of monday uh for the pc weird west is available on current uh well, i'm sorry next gen consoles it's still weird to me not i don't know which ones are which at this point so uh, next gen always means the most up to date to me at very least uh that is out as of yesterday and ys9 monstrum nox is on playstation 5 the lord of the rings heroes of middle earth is available on ios and android uh as of tomorrow thursday death or treat is on current i'm sorry next gen playstation xbox and then pc as well and marvel's midnight suns makes its way to playstation 4 and xbox one tomorrow uh i'm sorry thursday not tomorrow um However, the Switch version of that game has been canceled. But the big kahuna, the big deal, the uh, the piece de la resistance, um, the Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is out on Friday. Uh, and here's a little quick tip if you're interested in the game and you don't mind having digital versions of the game. That game is in a special deal that Nintendo has going on where you can spend $100 for two certificates for video games. And what you get is like vouchers that you can use on Nintendo games. Now it's typically only first party games, but there are a large, there's a large list of games available. So if you have a Nintendo switch, log into the Nintendo store and look for that. It was, I think it was on the what's new page uh, when I checked, but it's a hundred dollars. And if you're a Costco member, excuse me, you can get uh, $90. I mean, a hundred dollars worth of cards for $90. So you could be potentially paying $90 for a $70 game in Legends of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, uh, plus another Nintendo game. Like, you could get uh, the newer Pokemon games. There's plenty of Mario games on it. Metroid Prime... uh, I'm sorry, Metroid Dread, not Metroid Prime Remastered, because it's only a $40 game, so that wouldn't be a good value for you. But there's plenty of games on there. Check it out if you're interested and you don't mind digital games. Um, On DVD this week, we have Knock at the Cabin. Again, it was just okay. Uh, And a Children of the Corn remake from 2020 that I did not know existed is out on DVD this week. Uh, Digital release this week, Evil Dead Rise, which is an okay movie. Um, It was fun. Uh, Evil Dead, the remake from, I want to say, 2016, somewhere around there, uh, is much better. And Paint, the digital release of that, is uh, now as well. That is um, the not the biography of the Happy Little Trees guy. What was his name? Oh, I can see his face. He's got the afro and the beard. You know who I'm talking about, and you're going to 
scold me when, when after this is over. Uh, is it Bob something? No. Bob Ross. Yes, Bob Ross. Look at me. Don't scold me. Uh, and then in theaters this week, Book Club, the sequel. It's got a name, but I mean, that's literally the only big release this week. Nobody cares. Unless you're a huge book club fan from the movie from 2018 or whatever it was. Um, there you go. Those are the quick hits for this week. On today's Nerd News Podcast, uh, I have a lot of news for you. Uh, I will touch on something that I spoke of last week in passing. I will give you an update on uh, a reboot that is in the works. I will tell you uh, some casting news for the next Mortal Kombat movie. And we'll t- I will review Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. And that is all coming up next on the Nerd News Podcast. At Tech D underscore Rob on Twitter, Instagram, and Twitch. More Nerd News Podcast next. Follow Tech D Rob on Instagram, Twitter, and Twitch. At Tech D underscore Rob. This is the Nerd News Podcast. Welcome back to the Nerd News Podcast. Again, I am Tech D Rob. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Twitch. All three of those platforms, Tech D underscore rob is the username twitch.tv slash tech d underscore rob instagram.com slash tech d underscore rob twitter.com slash tech d underscore rob all of the above is available at your fingertips or at your thumbs depending on um, how you access the internet either way it's available to you uh so let's just get some news going first so um in news that will make you feel old the pokemon trading card game started in the 90s Late 90s, but it started in the 90s, which was over 23 years ago, right? So imagine my surprise when I see an article about the original Pokemon set being on Antiques Roadshow. Antiques Roadshow. I've seen Magic the Gathering. Um, I've seen Magic the Gathering cards on there. But seeing Pokemon just makes me feel some type of way. It's, um, I don't like it. Um, it makes me feel real old because I was in high school when the Pokemon games started. So that makes me feel even older. Like if you were a kid when Pokemon came out and now it's on Antique Trojo, maybe you still feel old, but man, I wasn't a kid. I mean, I was still basically a kid, but I was, I was double digits at the very least. Almost, I was driving. Uh, when I was playing the card game. So, yeah, it's uh, it's a weird thing to, to see. Um, you know? But uh, I didn't see how much it went for or what they appraised it at. But you can imagine that it went for, it had to have been a pretty large sum. Um, last week I talked about a King of the Hill reboot. And when I ranked King of the Hill in my top animated shows of all times... Of all time, not all times, of all time. And um, the thing that was cool about that is literally I got a message from someone. The same person who said that he listened to the Nerd News and was kind of lost. He he messaged again and he was like, man, I'm glad I listened again. Because you told me that there's a Futurama reboot coming and a King of the Hill reboot coming. Well, there's news on the King of the Hill reboot. It's going to be set 15 years in the future where Bobby Hill is an adult. Now... If that doesn't get you hype for this reboot, I don't know that you're interested because this this is going to be incredible Um, because it's going to be so much fun. And then, uh, you know, from there, I don't know much else. This is information that was brought by the Stephen Stephen Root, who is the voice actor for uh, Bill. And he's also on the show Barry, which if you're not watching Barry, holy cow, it's 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 amped up. Um, But yeah, King of the Hill. The reboot's going to be set 15 years in the future. No word on a release date. They're supposed to start... um, Supposed to start table reads last month. And I'm assuming that that will be something that is hit hard by the WGA strikes. Uh, So, which is a a good segue to that. So, the WGA, the Writers Guild of America, is requesting more money. uh, And it's uh, mostly in response to um, AI concerns, which I I understand. Uh, AI could i don't think it should be could be the downfall of professions like like that like creative professions now it wouldn't be to the betterment of the product not at all it would be to the detriment because uh 
there's no way AI can completely ever take over for this kind of thing. There's always going to be issues. Now it could, it could give people gen general things and then they can, you know, uh, fine tune it from there and make it more human approach. But in general, I think it's going to be, uh, it, there's going to be a lot of things that are made by AI that aren't going to be good. That are going to be, they're going to lack a little, a little human touch. They're going to lack some, some heart and all these kinds of things. And, um, that's exactly what this is about because these writers, this is their livelihood. And, uh, if AI takes over, they're out. So they got to have some assurances now. Uh, but that's not what I'm here to talk about. It's not, I'm not here to tell you why I think they should, this is a con genuine concern. I'm here to just tell you what it means. What it means is that blade has been delayed. The Marvel uh, cinematic universe adaptation with Mahershala Ali in the titular role. Uh, it also means the stalling of stranger things, the final season, they were set to go soon, but no longer. However, it is not stalling rings of power, which was quote unquote, completely finished. But from what I understand, there's always rewrites and that kind of thing on set. And if that happens now, they don't have the writing staff. And that just leads me to believe that this, it, it being completely set in stone means they can't see something on the day of shooting and go, you know what? That doesn't make sense. They just have to go with it at this point. Uh, because the, if they rewrite it, uh, those people are striking. Or maybe they're hoping they'll get things fixed. I, I don't know if you can hear that bird that's... Come on, bird. Stop. Anyway. Nope, he's going to keep going. But anyway, I digress. Um, it, it, it's going to stop some things. The things that are really important uh, to have writers involved with. Uh, and I think we'll see the things that come out of this time period that weren't involving these writers might not be that good. So we'll see. We'll see if uh, if 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 it's if it's a good news situation for these writers and a bad news situation for these um, these big companies because I think the effects of this won't be felt immediately. We'll feel these effects down the line. So we'll see. We will see. Speaking of down the line, uh, the next Mortal Kombat movie. There's casting rumors, and Johnny Cage. If you've seen the first of the new ones. Uh, Johnny Cage is set to be a big part of this one. Well, it appears they may have cast their Johnny Cage in one Carl Urban, who, if you're not familiar with the boys, um, he was also Judge Dredd. He was in Thor. He was uh, the guy who took over the Bifrost whenever Hela took over on Thor 3. He was also in the new Star Trek movies. He was the doctor, uh, the doctor guy. Uh, Carl Urban, a fantastic actor. So, uh, I, do I think he can pull off Johnny Cage? I certainly do, but I'm a little surprised they went with someone of his age and not someone a little younger. But you know what? Any more, anytime there's more Carl Urban in my life, I'm for it. So I'm excited uh, about this this casting, well, potential casting uh, for the next MK movie, Mortal Kombat. Um, Carrie Fisher got a star on the Walk of Fame over the weekend. Well, on on May fourth, um, obviously. Uh, and on site were Mark Hamill and Billy Lord, her daughter, but her siblings weren't invited. So uh, apparently there was there was a they weren't ever really that close or anything or something like that. But it still seems like something you'd invite the, at least invite them to the to be in the crowd. Or maybe it is that bad. I don't know. But she Carrie Fisher deservingly gets her star on the Walk of Fame. So that was cool. Uh, and on May fourth of all days. And uh, as of now, you can currently play the PlayStation 4 and Xbox versions of Hogwarts Legacy. Those are out, finally. Um, it came out last week. Kind of a surprise, because I think it was supposed to come out in April. I thought they pushed it to, like, June, but they, you know, it did come out, so it's out. Um, and on that game, and also on Star Wars Jedi Survivor, you can um, turn on an arachnophobia setting, which will uh, limit arachnids in your game and maybe even completely eliminate them um which they're they're a big deal in hogwarts 
legacy. They're so far in Jedi Survivor, they're pretty prominent from what I've seen. And again, I'm not I'm not too far into it, unfortunately. Uh, but it's um, it's interesting to say the least. So I'm not sure if this changes your game any, or maybe it just changes that type of uh, type of enemy. But it's interesting to see that they're putting these kinds of things in video games now, especially when it's not they're not important to the story of the game. It seems like it's an easy fix for someone like that. So that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, that's that's all the little things I wanted to get out of the way. So now on to Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. First, a review. And then I will tell you how it ranks in my ranking of not just MCU movies, but also MCU trilogies. Because this completes a trilogy for... Um, the, what would it be? The, the sixth trilogy in the MCU? Maybe maybe more? Uh, no, it would be the seventh trilogy. Sorry. I, wrote, I have six other ones written down in my notes that I'm looking at. And um, it's... Uh, it's the seventh one total. But let's get started with a review. So it starts pretty hot out of the gate, which is you can expect in a trilogy of a movie. The uh, setup is very little. We know these characters well. They were in two full movies about just them. They were in uh, Avengers Endgame. They were in Avengers Infinity War. Uh, and very well-known characters at this point. So you don't need any backstory. And, oh, and I'm sorry, there was also a Christmas special that introduced Cosmo the dog. And Cosmo was, is, was co- of course, in this movie as well. Uh, and in the mo- in the Christmas special, if you've not seen it, it is important to note. Well, not it, it's not important to note, but um, it is briefly mentioned in the movie that um, Peter Quill and Mantis are related because they're both their father. Both were fathered by Ego who was the main bad guy in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. So, uh, the movie, easily, easily, top five in the MCU for me. Better than the other two. It is incredible. It was a, such a fun movie. Um, soundtrack was in, incredible. As you could guess, if you've seen the first two Guardians of the Galaxies, the soundtrack on this doesn't disappoint. I've been listening to the soundtrack to, to the, the licensed songs from that soundtrack since I watched the movie. And it just, it's a, a reminder of the movie to me. And uh, it's so, the movie's so good. It's just so good. Now, people have been touting it as better than Spider-Man No Way Home. The best movie in the MCU since Endgame. And I think I agree. It's, um, it was certainly the most fun I've had in a, in a, in a, in a Marvel movie, this whole, this whole phase. Um, I mean, I had a lot of fun in Spider-Man No Way Home, but I think that was still considered the previous phase. Uh, Spider-Man No Way Home hit me in the nostalgia feels, which I know sounds stupid, but it hit all the right nostalgia notes. Uh, this one doesn't hit nostalgia notes because it's a team that we're still still fairly new. Uh, but the heart behind this movie is so prevalent. James Gunn loves these characters, and you can tell every second of the movie. James Gunn knows we love these characters, and you can tell that every second of this movie. I'm not going to give any spoilers right now because I would love for you to be able to experience everything in it for the first time like I did. Um, but just go in knowing it's two and a half hours nonstop start to finish. There is not a moment to rest. There are a few middle point, like a few downtime things that aren't really that much downtime. Um, I think it's just to like give the audience a a little time to gather themselves and be ready for what's about to come because it's, it's just one thing after another is being thrown at, at this, this, um, this team. And, um, the introduction of Adam Warlock is literally in the first five minutes, not a spoiler. Uh, you know, Adam Warlock's in the movie. If you've watched the trailers, Will Poulter plays him. Um, it's a lot of, uh, I, I'm trying not to say too much about it. Just know it's incredible. Perhaps a 10 out of 10. I don't know for sure. I'm going to go see it again on Tuesday. 
well, today, if you're watching this, I will be probably have seen it already, but you know, I record this on a Monday night. I've told you that before. Um, but it's, um, it's so good. I thought about going to see it again on Sunday. I just couldn't find a, a good time to, but I really think this is a movie that I could watch many, many times. Uh, similar to No Way Home, similar to um, Endgame. Both of those movies are movies that I could watch over and over again. I could still watch them to this day. And, and in fact, I might go watch the last scene of Endgame today. It was that it's it's so good. Um, but now that re- leads me to where it ranks in the top ten. Like I said, top five movie. My top five. We're in game and Infinity War. I usually put it as one. Spider Man No Way Home is also in my top five now. And I would put Captain America. Um, which Captain America? Ugh, the Winter Soldier is probably the better of the three. But I like all of them. And then I think number five would be Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. I really do. Top five. It could and it could be it could be higher. It might be higher to be honest with you. So, uh, in terms of captain, I mean, I'm looking at my notes and I put best Marvel trilogy and captain America right underneath it. Uh, in terms of best Marvel trilogies, I think it's right up there with Spider-Man. It's right up there with captain America. It's right up there with Avengers. Now Avengers, the second one was not good. Avengers one's good. Avengers three slash four, which I, again, I basically say is one movie. Uh, Infinity War and Endgame. Um, Those trilogies are the best. Spider-Man, Captain America, Avengers. The worst ones are Iron Man, Ant-Man, and Thor. Iron Man slightly slightly at the top just because of the character itself. Thor would be my next favorite, but then least last place is Ant-Man. Now, I love Ant-Man. He's a great character. And Ant-Man 1 and 2 were fun. Ant-Man Quantumania, eh. Not great. So my my new ranking of best trilogies is probably Avengers is at the top still. Sorry. Spider-Man, Guardians of the Galaxy, Captain America, Captain America, Iron Man, Thor, Ant-Man. That's that's how I'd rank the best Marvel trilogies. And um, go ahead and get in the comments. Let me know what you think. Send me a message, Instagram, Twitter, Twitch. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Uh, and next week, I plan to get into a spoiler type situation for Guardians of the Galaxy. I just wanted to give people a couple weeks to get in, get into it and see where we're at uh, so they can get their own opinions before they hear mine. Uh, well, I mean, I guess that's not fair. I did I did just give you my opinions, but you know what I meant. So, so I'm not spoiling anything for you, and you don't have to turn away this episode. Uh, so if you're on the fence about guardians i really think you should see it it's that fun it's that good i loved it and i'll see it again i will have seen it again by the time you see this probably but it was awesome it was so good Ah, i can't wait to see it again i I, it's uh. oh and when i saw it in 3d the first even the first 20 minutes were blurry because they didn't have the 3D fixed right. And I still love the movie. That's a good test. That's a good sign, I think. Anyway, that is the Nerd News Podcast for the week of May 8th. I don't I, I, I don't know when you're watching this, so I don't want to say a specific date. But that's that's where we're at. You know, May 8th, the week of May 8th. So thank you for joining me, and um, I'll see you next week. That's it for this week's Nerd News Podcast. Follow Tech D Rob on Instagram, Twitter, and Twitch at Tech D underscore Rob. Subscribe now. More nerd news next week.